Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. I don't usually review TV shows, but I'm gonna start. I've been doing it for members, but you know what, girl? I wanna hear all of your opinions. I want all of the insights from my whole audience as well. So members will still be getting content, but you guys will also be getting it as well. Thank you for being here. Thank you for liking the videos. This is a series you guys actually requested from me when it came out, but I didn't get around to it. And this is the Mormons, Secret Live of Mormon Wives. So we're gonna go ahead and review it. This is the first episode. I have not been spoiled. I have not Googled. I have not seen anything from the internet that I recall. So I'm kind of going in super blind. So let's see what this is about. Utah-based social media influencer, Taylor Frankie Paul. Taylor Frankie Paul. Taylor Frankie Paul. One Ooh. of the most salacious headlines in mom influencing, the Mormon mom talk community scandal. Mom talk, a bunch of Utah moms. Oh, mom talk. Oh, I just learned about mom talk. It's like Mormon moms, right? And a lot of people have been using mom talk and their hashtags on TikTok, but they're not Mormon, right? Is that the scoop? Did I get it right? Swinging, partner swapping, being scandalous. Damn. Okay. Out the gate, out the gate. I knew it had something to do with maybe swinging, but out the gate, this is not my bubble. So I'm very excited. So Taylor, tell us how a couple of Mormon moms getting together, making TikToks suddenly turns into this crazy swinging sex scandal. Honestly, them Mormons be kinky and good for you as long as it's consensual. Okay. started so innocent. Me and all these moms were like feeling the same things. I grew up in a glass box thinking that everybody lives this way. Interesting. First, they're using a Sam Smith song that's definitely gonna get me copyrighted. So I'm probably gonna put some funny music over this section. But basically, it's all these girls who thought everybody was Mormon and they realized they're Mormon. It also started off with them having things in common, I guess. So, okay, let's see, let's see. No swearing, one piercing, no caffeine, no alcohol, no tattoos, your body's a temple. We're not supposed to have sex before marriage. Okay, so these are like the Mormons that were rebellious, yes? This isn't like the soaking Mormons, or is it? Is it? Because I learned about that too. A lot of the moms love the foundation of our church. Love, family, service. You're trying to be an example of a higher way of living. But for a lot of us, following the rules of the Mormon religion is just... It's impossible. Ooh, I love a rebel. I love a rebel story. We're raised to be these housewives for the men, serving their every desire. Well, I'm like, oh, this. Oh, wait, is this like a girl boss empire? Cheating is not okay, but swinging is consensual. Ooh, is she like the mafia Mormon mom who created like a way for them to be like Mormon on the outside with swingers on the inside? Oh my God, is there an up down, upside down pineapple somewhere here? Started as a group of Mormon moms making TikToks. There was something freeing about it. When it comes to the Mormon scale, there's definitely a wide range. Some are more Mormon than others. I'm assuming Nara Smith is not invited to the swinger group because Nara's the other side of Mormon bomb TikTok, I guess. We are a new generation of Mormon women. Oh, we have oh, a oh, okay, okay. Mm, as a former Catholic that was raised pretty religious, we would call this a lukewarm ca Catholic. We would say you want the title of Catholic, but not the responsibility of your chastity or modesty. But shake that ass, girl, shake that ass, you know? I think I have about 1.5 million, probably 2 million followers. And then it just turned into, this whole group is swinging with each other. Taylor sent shockwaves through her following, announcing that she was getting a divorce. We started having parties, really wild things ended up. Taylor Frankie, wait, is she associated with the Frankies? Isn't the Mormon mom who abused her kids Frankie? On Reddit, because of one of the moms from Mom Talk, my blood was boiling. I got on a TikTok live, 50 to 60,000 people. We would have parties and there was a group of us that were intimate with each other. It was oh. more like orgies. The guys were like, whoa, like our wives just did that. It happened several times. Like, I have made out with all of the husbands and that's where things just kind of like. You know what girl, God bless America. You know what I'm saying? I always say God bless the USA. I've always said that. Look, as a person who for 10 years was polyamorous, hung out with a bunch of swingers and lots of people, even though I was never in the formal swinging community, I never like really did swinging. I just did polyamory and open polyamory, went to a few orgies, um, was more of a watcher, more of a voyeur myself than an exhibitionist. Um, obviously, as long as it's safe, sane and consensual, I'm here for it. As long as everybody is consenting, as long as, you know, there's testing and condoms, like I'm okay with it, right? 
But interesting to see the Mormon girls out here doing it, but not so much considering the scandal that most religious communities end up having. This is why religion is so frustrating to me. Like, adapt already. Y'all are already doing things behind closed doors. Just come out with it. Come out with your homosexuality. Come out with your premarital and come out with your other stuff that you need to go to prison for. There is so much to religion that is just obviously the construct's not working. Reform it. Get rid of it. Do something with it. I was a really wild child, did it all, you know, partying and drinking. Girl, if she was already a wild child, like how Mormon are we? So really there's like a cultural Mormon and Mormon. So like they're culturally Mormon. They're not like practicing Mormon, right? I got married in the temple. I was being pressured into it of by course. like the church and my mom. Okay, girl, we're here to deconstruct the religious bubble. That's what I'm getting from this. She knew Tate and I were having sex before marriage. Oh. And I had a hard time fighting for, like, my voice at that time. Mom talk, it started with four girls. Whitney, Macy, Michaela, and I. Ever since the swinging scandal, I've been really trying to keep a low profile. I haven't seen the girls in months. Oh. So... I'm excited. I'm Macy Neely. I'm 27, and I'm originally from Orange County, California. Oh, shout out to Orange County, California, girl. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to write these people's names down because we're going to have to make a new list. I've been married five years to okay. my husband, Jacob Neely, and we have two kids. And I'm a bad bitch. That is what I am. I need to hear about you in Dakota. <laughs> That's the tea I really want. Okay, I'm going to let you go first, though. How are you and Jacob? I feel like Jacob never initiates. You talked to him about it? Not really like in depth, but I feel like maybe I should. I feel like if you just talk to him about it and be like, this is how I feel, yeah. he at least knows because he can't, they can't read our minds. Okay, good advice, good advice. Nobody can read minds. Okay, I like the energy, like the energy. Coda, he's my new boyfriend. Oh boy. We met on good old Instagram. He's very charismatic, he's charming, and he's very attractive. <laughs> he asked me to be his girlfriend, and then we got in a big fight. When you fought, like what was he saying? Like what was he getting mad at you about? I drink and then i drink more alcohol's out girls we're not drinking anymore i'm over it but taylor's 28 and macy's 27 so to be fair but then you know like i love the gen z's lesson to party culture i definitely find myself as i get older like i'm just i've never really been into alcohol but in my early 20s definitely did it socially definitely party definitely had fun but also definitely never really loved it just kind of like that's what people were doing. So I will say, I'm glad those days are behind me. Yeah, I got drunk. It was my fault. I'll 100% uh, yeah. admit that. Like I, I was dumb and drunk and so I felt really, really bad. He's like, I think we're just scared to like you. And like a lot more goes in with me, like kids. Yeah. My history. Yeah. My situation that just came out, right? So he knows that that all comes with me. Then there's a side of me, it's like, should I be single? They're not soulmates or not high compatibility partners, whatever words you want to use already. Like this isn't your person, but it depends. Does she want to marry her person, her high compatibility partner? Or does she want to be unattached at the moment? Maybe she's not ready to meet that person. I just got out of this relationship. Like, get all of that out of my system that I've been wanting. Do you want to do this? Great question, because it seems like she actually doesn't know what she wants. Because she doesn't know what she wants, she wants to make sure she knows what she wants. So she might need to test it out. We have a lot of trust issues. I won't Yeah, lie. I was going to say, does he have a lot of trust issues because of your past? He does, and I do. Like, with yeah. him. So we have trust issues because we started off on a rocky start. Uh -oh. um, we post a TikTok together and things come out on Reddit and girls are on my TikTok saying, oh, he was just like with my roommate last week or... No. Okay, we don't know. If, were they together? Were they actually like exclusive? But also, you know, coming from Love is Blind and then watching something like this, you see the difference in the contrast between people. Ooh, now I'm so fascinated. For those of you that are following my Love is Blind journey for members, I'm doing for members on YouTube, Love is Blind. What do you guys think, like just in contrast to that energy, to this energy? Now I'm curious, for those of you who've seen my Love is Blind reviews, don't these people feel so different? Like what a different bubble. What a different bubble. The way they talk about love, the way they talk about relationships. Oh, I'm fascinated. You kind of like the drama in the relationship, huh? Oh. No, I don't a like the drama. Bit. A little bit. You like the, like a little bit of jealousy. I like that Because you can tell that he like cares. Mm -hmm. I can um, see that. I go to therapy. See, toxicity is I feel more secure when you are dysfunctional. Because if you are more dysfunctional in the name of loving me, that must mean it's love. But it's actually the more functional and healthy you are, that's actually what a healthy relationship can look like. Look, dysfunctional people can fall in love. Unhealthy people fall in love all the time. Like I used to be an unhealthy person that was in love, but the, dif dis the relationship was dysfunctional. So once you become a healthier person, you tend to have healthier relationships with a little droppling of dysfunction because we're not perfect. We always make mistakes. We have mental health problems. Things come into play. Um, but yeah, that's kind of interesting.
so different. Oh my God. I feel like whiplash a little bit. I just recorded an episode for Love is Blind. So now I'm getting like whiplash of the different bubbles. And I'm like, oh. I think I was a bit worried about you moving into relationships so soon. Only because you're gorgeous. You're like TikTok famous. You're hot. Like you can get anyone you want. And so I'm like, don't settle. But I haven't met him yet. I Definitely don't settle, but not because of all of those things. Don't settle because you're dysfunctional, right? Healthy people can settle in relationships too. And in my bubble, if you're new to my channel, settling is not ending up with just anybody. It's ending up with like a low compatibility partner. And what you want to do is you want to end up picking a high compatibility partner where you have most values in, in in line. If you're at like a solid 80% to begin dating with, you'll end up at a solid 99% at the end of it. That's how I think about it. And so what you're doing is you're making sure you're on the same page in terms of values, how you see the world, what you think about life. Like they're Mormon, as an example. Are you socially Mormon? Are you like culturally Mormon? Are you really, you know, into Mormon, the Mormon religion? How serious is this? Are we raising our kids Mormon? They're obviously not very serious about being Mormon because they're drinking and having sex and all that stuff. But there is, you know, that's all the stuff you have to talk about during the dating period. And then how serious are you about dating? Are we moving in? Are we having this conversation? And marriage, if for the sake, if you're new to my channel, doesn't mean like the legality. The, it's just a long-term commitment. Are we long-term committing to one another? So I don't know if she's ready to find a high compatibility partner because it sounds like there's things about her she should change first, like grow out of her alcohol problem because it sounds like she has one, grow out of her party stage, her dysfunctional need to have toxicity and jealousy as a part of her relationships. Like all of these things you don't want in a marriage. Kate and I are getting divorced. I don't know what you would call it if it's like soft swinging, but you don't like fully switch. We had an agreement, like all of us, and I did step out of oh. that agreement. I at oh. least wanted to explain that to people. Oh, is she like a cheater? Because you can swing ethically, but she stepped out of the agreement. That's a consent violation. <gasps> oh, no. Like, my husband wanted to share. He did want to open that up. So it's like I, I caught feelings for a man that my husband welcomed into our, our house. Like, no oh. one was innocent. Everyone has hooked up with, like, everyone in the situation. She was like... Oh... Mm, you know, this happens a lot in situations where, you know, you catch feelings for people, you're being intimate, it happens. But this is why I say like love isn't enough to make long-term compatibility commitment work. So even if you're catch feelings, look, she's not with the person she caught feelings for, right? Or is she? Is this new guy, the guy she caught feelings for? I don't know. So, you know, when you're having these conversations and you're, you have to ask yourself, like, is the feelings what we're building a relationship on? Or is it our values, right? There's nothing wrong with swinging as long as it's consensual. There's nothing wrong with polyamory or any of these things as long as it's consensual. The issue is that if you step out of the agreement and you go against or behind people's back, that's the problem. Now, if she just caught feelings and then she brought it up to her partner and then he was upset with that, I think you also have to prepare for those things. You're going to catch feelings, but feelings aren't what make a marriage successful. So you have to decide, is you catching feelings enough to end your marriage? Obviously, it was a, it was enough. They weren't like, on the same page, obviously, but it also, it happens in life. So, okay, interesting details. Ooh, interesting group of people because I come from the positivity Seattle bubble when it comes to polyamory and swinging and stuff. So I'm used to like very progressive people being swingers and stuff, but obviously a lot of conservatives also swing. There were a lot of Trump voters at the dungeons, let me tell you. Okay, very interesting. Taylor used to be the face of Mom Talk, but once the whole controversy blew up, no one really knew what Mom Talk stood for anymore. Like, is it just a bunch of swingers or are we just a bunch of Mormon women fighting the patriarchy? That's really the question. I would love that question answered. Great question. I guess you could say a lot of us in Mom Talk look similar. We all have a similar style or a similar look, but we're just going off based what's trending, especially in Utah. There's a lot of blonde here. <laughs> so, I mean, what do you expect? See, I need you to twerk your ass off as hard as you can. Interesting. They're so like, uh, you got to be really business minded. As simple as this looks, you all got to be business minded to do this. It does take a certain level of intimacy and interest to all be on TV, to all be uniform, to all look specific. This is very interesting, actually. From a YouTuber's perspective, I find it fascinating. Like how much of it is branding? What are they doing? How much of this is discussed ahead of time? And in case you guys don't know, I also watch Selling Sunset. I love all the shows on Netflix, basically. Actually, I've never watched like The Housewives of Orange County, which is funny because I saw them once filming at a mall, but that's not important. The point is like, I've never really seen or is it Newport Beach? See, I don't even know the word. Is that, what is it? The Moms of Orange, is it the Moms of Orange County? Wives, whatever it's called. I never watched those shows. I've never seen it. But this is like that. The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Oh, interesting. I'm fascinated. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm fascinated. Um, so has anyone talked to Taylor? 
Not really. I feel like she's kind of like holding everyone at arm's distance right now. I'm coming over my mom's today because I have had a secret I've been holding on to. Oh. I'm really nervous about it. Cross my fingers, she doesn't kill me. Do you need me to watch him today? Um, I might actually. I have a date tonight. With who? Dakota. So you're starting to see him a lot more now? I, didn't I tell you he asked me to be his girlfriend? Didn't I tell you that? No. Oh, well, he did. But Dakota and I made this TikTok of saying, should we date or should we not? And of course, my mom goes and gets in there and she puts the literal emoji, red flag. Oh my God, red flag as your mother, let your divorce settle, take your time, take time to heal, focus on you and your kids. If it, he, if it's means, he'll be, if it's means, he'll be there in the end. I think she's like, if it's meant to be. Wow, this is my nightmare. I am a YouTuber. I do this full time, but this is my nightmare. I really don't want my life to be the content this way. Like I might talk about my life sometimes, but like, see, this is why I review other people's lives because girl, I could not, my anxiety could not handle my mom on my social media. Batsy, please stop. Praise the Lord. Jesus is his name. You know, I just couldn't, I couldn't even imagine it flag it gets a ton of likes i go delete it i wonder why the mom yeah i hope the mom like respects her boundaries and everything but also the mom's on this television show so and also that kitchen is so clean yo this is a clean kitchen it's like it's never been cooked in but i know they've got do mormons cook mormons cook right i assume because they got big families i was catholic with 10 kids so people were always like are you catholic or mormon catholic and we cooked i grew up in a very brutal honest family so my mom you guys are gonna get to know my mom i love her but she's been like against dakota we shouldn't date we shouldn't do this we shouldn't do that and she's gonna you know tell me the truth and tell me how she feels do you think i'm a bad person for those mistakes that i did I don't think you're a bad person. I think I just think that you've done a lot of bad things and that have made you look bad. Ooh, interesting. I don't believe in bad people. I just think like people have experiences and they do bad things. But I will say, does she think she's bad for swinging? Because I don't think she's bad for swinging. But I will say she's obviously not practicing Mormon because she's also drinking. It's hard because if your whole village is in the Mormon bubble, then you're going to feel that constant pressure. So even if she wanted to be fully secular, It'd be hard to be fully secular in the Mormon bubble. Like I couldn't be fully secular in a Catholic bubble in a sense. Like you'd almost have to be culturally Mormon because, you know, that's where your village is and that's the village that helps take care of your kids. Mm. This is a this is a social dilemma right here. Have you talked to your bishop or the church about anything? No. How come? I don't know, because like what if they're going to like excommunicate me? Hey, when you are out soft swinging, what do you expect? True. My name's Jesse. I am a hairdresser and I own a hair salon, hair extension company, and hair school side of it. But did any of you guys swing? Like, were any of you involved? I was like at the parties and I didn't even know that it was going on. You never picked up on a vibe, nothing? <laughs> Brett said that he picked up vibes from the husbands. Okay. Because they were asking him weird questions. Um. Like, what? They were like, so like, are you the jealous type? So they were trying to see if he was gonna be into it. This point blank, he's like, I mean, I don't share if that's what you mean. Good oh. answer, Brett. <gasps> yeah. Were you part of the swinging group? Not part of any. <laughs> I'm way too busy and tired. By the end of the night, I barely want to have sex with my husband half the time. <laughs> I just don't know if I could handle like four other guys. Husband and I, we do not share. Absolutely no share. But Taylor, she admitted that they definitely thought that we would be fun to swing with. Oh. We're hot. What can we say? I'm not going to lie. This is like Mormon girls meet Beverly Hills. Like the lips, the hair, the like plastic aesthetic. But they're Mormon. It's so, it's so different that the contrast of like when I was in Arizona, I lived near a town of like very traditional Mormon. So they had like the puffy sleeves and the hair. And then um, uh, I went to Utah once for a family friend and everyone there looked very like wholesome. These girls do not look wholesome, which is very interesting. A different kind of side of the Mormon bubble. Cause I, ooh, I've even been to Mormon temple once. Oh, fun fact. I was coworkers with a Mormon woman and she asked me to come to Christmas service with her and I did. So I've actually been to Mormon temple before. Interesting. Yeah, I've never seen Mormons that quite look like them. So my name is Demi Angaman. I am 29 years old. I have been married to my husband, Brett, for almost three years. He is 46 and I am 29. Okay, hey, we're gonna have to redo that math, please. Okay, I'm really bad with math. So she was 26 when he was 43. Ugh, brother, ugh. I just don't know how you choose these guys like Dakota. What's wrong with Dakota? Dakota has an addiction. Oh. 
Oh, okay. And that doesn't define who he is as a person. He's a recovering addict. I mean, oh. he almost died from fentanyl. Okay, that addiction, obviously, I've known amazing addicts in my life, like recovered addicts, people who have been sober, amazing mothers, amazing fathers, like really smart, intelligent, wonderful, fabulous people. But they do have to be on the side of healing. And I think that's the question. Where is he on his healing journey? Because she's obviously still in the middle of hers. So she's not, she might not be a good spouse for somebody with an addiction, right? And she's drinking. Are they drinking together? Is he sober? Is he, is he only sober partially, which is a possibility? Uh, yeah, cause so he actually could be much more functional than her. But the question is, where is he on his recovery journey? And she, like I said, I still think she's in the mix of it personally. Uh, yeah, interesting, hmm. That you really have to think about, they're trying to heal, and which you should be healing. Yeah, I think it's hard because your kids, like pro kids who are products of divorce, whether they're adult children or minor children, will be impacted by that divorce. And so there's a lot of literature out there that's really helpful to read. Or even more than that, it's just like being aware of that, that it feels like this is about you, it feels like an era that's about you, and it is, but you also decided to bring two people into the universe. And so it's got to be about them, but not at the expense of yourself. And it's got to be um, you, but not at the expense of the kids. And that's really a juggling act. That's really hard to do while you're also trying to date and form a relationship with somebody, which is why they don't recommend you do it, right? People will say like, don't date, wait a second. You can date as a single mom. That's totally valuable. You can be the love of your life while you're a single mom, while you're a single dad, while you're a single parent. But because she's still in the mixture of her own dysfunction, it's gonna be harder to not accidentally in vulnerability pick the wrong person again. And God forbid be stuck with like a third kid or um, instead of saying be stuck with, maybe we can say end up with bringing a third kid into the universe that you can't quite be there for full time. Yeah, that's hard. You just got divorced and you need to let that settle because ultimately me and your dad are gonna be the ones that pick up the pieces. And I need to like probably, I don't know how to say it really. Say what? Um, I, I have to take a pregnancy test tonight. Ooh, I can't tell if she's messy on purpose or if I can't. What kind of show is this? You guys, I'm feeling overwhelmed already. Is this a show that like is going to frustrate me because she's going to make bad decisions for money and fame, which is really going to make me upset. Is she like a messy YouTuber almost who's just going to make, is she Fousey tube? Like, is she going to make the worst decisions? Is she Logan Paul? What's happening? Am I watching Logan Paul? Who's like strategic about his messiness? Or am I watching Fousey tube? That ha is he having, is she having a mental breakdown? Like the fact that she's having unprotected sex right now is so human of her, but girl, how messy is this show going to be? Taylor for real. Yeah. That you're so, you're, you're so stupid. Why would you put yourself in that? Well, situation. I didn't purposely do it. You're always screwing up everything. It pisses me off. Interesting dynamics there. I can't tell if the mom is also playing it up for TV or not. I can't tell what's happening, but I will say it's not very loving and it's very dysfunctional. And I don't like the way the mom talks to her, but I don't like the way she runs her life either. Go to therapy. But she probably wants her to talk to somebody in the church, which is a mistake. You should go to therapy. She should talk to a mental health professional. How big are Mormons on mental health? I'm gonna assume like many other religious communities, zero. Let me know in the comment sections because I don't know, but this is, oh, the dysfunction did not start with Taylor. It started with her parents. It probably started with their parents or their, their parents, you know. Just so tired of you doing everything to this family. Ooh, that language, you're doing this to the family the way the family looks ooh, the pressure they created the tailor they created the environment that created the tailor which is interesting i wonder if they have other kids and i wonder how those kids turned out taylor obviously isn't being fed she doesn't know herself well enough she doesn't know where she belongs hmm. and you don't even care you're like hmm I'm not it's not that she doesn't care she's traumatized look at that that's a traumatized face right there it's it's like, i don't know what you want me to like, i just don't know at the end of the day i do know my mom loves me and wants the best but Emotionally, I would say I have like good days and bad days and I'm still struggling with the gossiping and judging and I'd rather her just support rather than tell me what to do. She does feel a little disconnected. She just feels slightly dead inside. Like uh, when you're disassociated almost, obviously this isn't therapy channel. So, but we talk about like knowing ourselves, like knowing ourselves well enough to know something's going on. I don't know if therapy is a tool for her. Meditation, maybe just asking herself like, hey, Taylor, what do you want? Not what your mom wants, not what the world wants. What do you want? 
what do you really want for your life? And she says, I don't know. Okay, how do we figure it out, right? I got, I went over this on a couple of recent podcasts, right? Who is Taylor in the story? Does she know? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it's how it should be. You just pissed me off and I just don't want to even talk to you. Oh, I was on Reddit one night and I saw this post that someone made about Connor being on Tinder on when he was trying to hide behind the swinger scandal to hide her own personal scandal. And I was like, what? Like, what is this? And I was really confused. And then I think I brought it up and I was like, by the way, like we saw this and she's like, oh, it's not true. Yeah, she's like, they took his pictures yeah, from high school, account. from his Facebook high yeah. school account or whatever and put it on Tinder. Right. She did brush it off really fast though, which made me like a little There's no way. Sus, it's Connor. But I mean, it's Connor, Connor. Yeah. so it's, it's like, Connor, no. and her, she's like, so public, I'm like, how would that go under the radar? For I, exactly. My name is Whitney Levitt. I am from Utah County, Happy Valley, Utah. In the beginning of Mom Talk, it was me, Macy, Michaela, and Taylor. We were a really solid group, but since Taylor came out and said Mom Talk was involved in swinging, I was in the thick of it here with all these rumors being spread about my family. We moved to Hawaii. You know, she's in the thick of it and everybody knows. Interesting, interesting. So Taylor was involved and said everybody was involved, but now people are trying to make it clear that they weren't necessarily involved and that's where the drama is ensuing. I feel like I was dropped in the middle of a series and I'm kind of picking up the pieces because I didn't follow, uh, follow any of this on TikTok. So now I'm trying to like piece it together. I paid for two months to get away from the noise. I had this, is this my life now? Like, am I just a mom? Which I'm not saying is a bad thing, but I didn't want that to define me and being invited to mom talk and- Yo, these Mormon girls throw it back, you know? They throw it back. Okay, okay. It's getting together with these other women oh. who had the same goals oh. was refreshing and it was- <laughs> 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 What? What part of this is for Jesus, girl? Throwing it back for Jesus. <laughs> Throwing it back for Jesus. Oh, man, that's funny, bro. They really shake it. Exciting. After Taylor blew up Mom Talk, I think we all needed that time away from each other. We needed that space. And I'm ready. I'm back from Hawaii. I want us all to come back together. Let's start dancing again, making some videos. My name is Michaela Matthews. I'm 23 years old. I've been married to my husband, Jace, for six years now. And I have three kids, Beckham, Haven, and Tommy. I was born and raised Mormon. My mom was one of the church leaders. So we would have to act like the most perfect little Mormon family. How old were you when you met Chase? 16. And then I got pregnant before marriage. Oh, Michaela's the six. Okay, 16. And pregnant. Okay, I thought Taylor was pregnant at 12, 16. So no, Taylor isn't pregnant. That was Michaela. Bad. I'm really gonna have a okay, I'll I'll figure out who everyone is eventually. Chase was 21 then. Um I do Um, uh, um, wait, <laughs> she was 16 when she got pregnant and he was 21. Jace was 21 then. I do social media content creation. Recently, I've been sharing a lot about my illness and my skin condition. I don't want to sit next to Taylor. I'm scared. Should I sit over here? No, you're good. <laughs> Have her sit there. Okay, you're I'm Taylor. You're Taylor. What's up, bitch? She won, though. Literally, she won. Right. Hi, guys. How's everyone doing? Good. How are you? Mm, are there mean Mormon girls? Is that what's happening? Are they making fun of her? And is it, like, cute and friendly? Or is it, like, mean? I can't. It sounds mean to me, but I can't tell if they're being mean and I'm, or what's happening. Oh, good. Like my titties? Yes. Oh. I'm actually very jealous. Mm, that's less shaming. What's happening? I also couldn't tell earlier if their gossiping was like friendly, normal gossiping or if it was like mean, malicious gossiping because I can't tell right away. I try not to judge people because like gossiping is a perfectly healthy thing as long as you're not spreading rumors, talking bad about people in a way that you're lying about them. Like talking about people is perfectly healthy as long as it's not negative. Like you don't want to you don't want to lie about people. Right? So, hmm. I'm a part of the original group of Mom Talk. It's nice to have Whitney back, especially going into this conversation with Taylor. 
I know that there's a lot to be said. Where, who's your plastic surgeon? <laughs> Dr. Chitty. Chitty Titty. Chitty Titty. <laughs> Dr. Chitty Titty. <laughs> I haven't seen Taylor in quite some time since the swinger drama. Yeah, I do have some issues with Taylor. Seven weeks? Wait, they feel so oh. good. They're they soft. They're not good. even hard anymore. Okay, I think I think they're slightly judging her, but I don't think they're being too malicious. I think they're judging her the way your cousin would, maybe. I'm trying to like it feels kind of like family, but I'm maybe they're obviously they're gonna suffer from internalized misogyny and all that other stuff. They're coming from a Mormon bubble. So there's some of that, but it's yeah, it's so interesting because Taylor can't just leave this bubble and go be on her own unless she wants to like let go of everything. Like, this is a dilemma of raising your kids super religious and you only give them a religious option because what if your kids turn out to not be religious? Where, do, where does their village exist? Where can they go? And this is what's hard. Her parents are obviously there to support her, but at the same time, they're kind of hoping she becomes probably more Mormon. But she's getting boob jobs. She's drinking alcohol. She's sleeping around. Like, ultimately, she probably needs to be a secularist and figure out if there's a world for her out there. Maybe be less of a community person, but it's also hard when you're raised in the church because you're kind of raised to be a community person. Hmm. Yeah. Do you like the size that you got? Yes. I love the size that she got. I think she got, she's very, it's very, looks very natural, very complimentary. I actually don't know the real reason of why Whitney moved to Hawaii. She didn't tell me, nobody told me. I honestly thought we were closer than that. I want to know why you posted that video. We built a relationship and I genuinely was like, cool, I don't trust Taylor. Okay, wait, so I'm going to get the lore figured out here. So Taylor and the girls, one part of the group had a swinging group and then Taylor was going through a divorce and then decided just to share. Did she break everybody's consent by sharing that video? Did people have trust in her? And if everybody was on the same page, oh, that sucks. Did Taylor share, did Taylor break everyone's consent? Oh, that's, that's not good. Like no one was innocent. Everyone has hooked up with like everyone in the situation. I felt betrayed. Genuinely was like, I don't feel safe with Taylor. I never want to make a video with Taylor ever again. Like, I, I still don't really trust you. Yeah. Oh, huge consent violation, bros. I feel like the story could have been approached differently. Like, I feel like it was very exploiting names of people that had nothing to do with this. Absolutely nothing. I don't trust you with telling certain things because I don't know what you're going to do with that information. Are you going to blast it on the internet? Yeah. Are you going to, like, I don't know. It's very, like, ID gap energy. And I'm just like, well, I, I don't feel safe with you. Okay, totally valid. Good boundary setting or like at least good honesty about the boundaries. Yeah. Oh, wait, is Taylor like kind of the bad guy? But like she's doing bad things in that sense. Oh, that would be a huge betrayal to get on the Internet and like name people and say everyone's involved, especially if everyone isn't literally involved. Like, do you want me to say sorry for like my post? Like, I don't know. <laughs> At the end of the day, I guess I'm saying I'm not apologizing for my post. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Uh-oh. This is not good. Ooh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad, bad. Okay. It's not that I don't care about people. It's more like what the people think online, right? It was, it, it was gonna be hyped, right? Like, controversy. I, oh, is it them? Like, Whitney and Connor had this. Whitney's husband's doing this. And I feel like that's where it was hard for people. All the moms, like, coming at me like crying like this is ruining our lives take it down blah 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 and then they're joking about it on their like tiktoks and i'm like well it was probably like a cope to get ahead of the branding right because it probably was ruining their lives but it publicly they had to act differently right acting like i don't care about the tiktok drama that i hear about proceeds to download reddit to read about it for hours yeah that sounds like a cope there would be no mom talk if i hadn't created it i feel that i should be given a little bit of grace now i i need to know the original tea then because did somebody already spill the secret and then Taylor had to defend herself? Like, did somebody who was in the swinging group come out and be like, Taylor's a slut? And she was like, oh, are we? And then she's like, everyone's a slut. Is that what happened? I ruined your life or did I help your life? Oh, I brought all of you girls into this mom talk thing and then I was all left. You guys did bashing me without even like knowing the full story. It was something I did like for you guys and like all the other girls and then I was just like kicked out. I wouldn't say oh. you brought us in. I had a following already going into mom talk, so I don't feel like I owe anything to you i just feel like there's a line especially like when we're friends like i feel like okay now this is starting to sound like a normal youtube friend group because this is the problem with doing business with people and making money with people 
is like real life plays gets there's drama and there's moral differences and value differences behind closed doors. And then if there's a fight like this, boom, but see how they're making money off of it still. And we are benefiting from it. Like, like the, like the video guys. Let's go, let's go. Then you made that video. And I, I didn't think about it. So I'm sorry that I didn't, like, I guess. We need this, we need this community. And I want us to be loyal to each other and feel safe with each other. I think it is a good thing to clear the air with my closer friends and mom talk. But I also am very scared to tell them I might be pregnant. Oh my God, oh, Taylor's drama, bro. Taylor, not a good look. You need to swift your way out of this conversation and into therapy. I don't want to lie about it anymore. What, 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 Taylor what? Taylor even asked me the other day about the whole Tinder rumor. Mm. And I denied it again. Oh. Yeah, I, it's probably hard for you to lie about that. I just think that at the time, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't even know what I wanted. I just hate talking about what happened to me in the same breath as what I did to you. Oh. I feel like it flips the script and it like turns me into a victim when in this scenario, I'm not. Uh-oh. Messy, messy, messy. And I definitely want there to be a distinction. These were actions I took. I had a real problem and it led to something that really hurt my wife. I'm so sorry. And I'm working on myself. I want to be compassionate. I just don't believe him. I don't know him. I don't know these people. It's just the same effing script I hear every effing time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the same script I hear every time. And honestly, I'm tired of hearing it. I'm tired of hearing it. So I can't be there for him emotionally, but... I hope he recovers. Everyone deserves therapy. Everyone deserves to be better, you know? So, okay, I hope you get better, my bro. When they asked us, we said it was a lie. I think when we look at religion, when you go through the temple, make those covenants, make those... See how religion destroys you? Just don't be a part of it. Your religion cannot be that good. You cannot believe in Jesus Christ and be doing these things. Look, as a person who grew up super Catholic with like Catholic siblings and Catholic parents, and I left the Catholic church at 19, I personally don't think people are religious. I think people think they're religious. I think people are having a relationship that is unique to them and their perceived, their perception of a God that might exist. And I think that for some people, it's really, really helpful. And for other people, it's just driving them crazy. It is making you a miserable person because you have to lie and deceive and rebel. I was a great liar when I was Catholic because I had to, right? I was queer. I had to lie about that. I had to lie about all the things that I was doing that I was interested in. But now that I'm not religious, I don't have to lie anymore. I can just be honest. You know, you're not gonna make me feel bad for being queer. You're not gonna make me feel bad for the life that I have. So I think that one of the freedoms of, of realizing that maybe this thing that I'm performing for the sake of my village, like maybe it's not worth it. You know, maybe it's not worth it. And look, secular people cheat, secular people have miseries, secular people are dysfunctional. So it's not like they wouldn't be, it's not like they wouldn't also suffer secularly, but maybe, maybe it would be a step closer to their joy. Promises with God, the sin is more serious. I just think that, I don't know. I'm a little nervous about how, like what they're gonna think. I don't know if they're gonna hate you or if they're going to hate me for making the choice to stay with you. Well, what do you do at like airports and stuff? If there's no toilet seat cover, I will literally like get toilet paper and like make a little Obviously. thing on the seat. <laughs> Obviously, what else do you do? Do you sit on it raw? No, you obviously, you wipe down the seat and then you put a bunch of toilet paper down. Obviously, one thing about Croatia, I will tell you this, they don't have toilet seat covers in most of their bathrooms and it freaks me out, even at restaurants. Like I noticed that at restaurants, they do not have toilet seat covers here, which is crazy because in America, there's always toilet seat covers. Um, yeah. You do that at my house? Yeah. <laughs> oh, at people's houses, sometimes. I've been to some of my friends' houses and their toilets are not clean. I'm so sorry, God bless you. Your toilet is not clean. Like. Especially if guests are coming over, we clean the toilets. We make them look gorgeous. You know what I mean? Because like people are going to sit on them, obviously. I mean, we clean them for ourselves, obviously. But also we extra clean it if a guest is coming over, obviously. And so like that's where your body goes. Like you want to keep things clean. You know, you always want to make sure your toilet is like lickable clean. 
I said what I said. Okay, so what's going on? Whitney, did you mm. say you had something you want to talk about? I... Ooh, just a reminder for all of us that, you know, you guys are always sending me messages like, is it weird that I don't have friends? I really want friends. This is friends. This is some people's lives. See, I don't want this. I don't want my friends in my business. You can stay out of my marriage and my business. But that's what happens when you belong to a community and a village. Yes, there are healthy versions of this. And yes, there are ways to do it. But let's be real. One of the reasons adults end up minding their own business as they get older is because the drama is, I don't want you in my marriage or in my business. Now, the fact that they were all swinging is probably a part of it, not them. I don't know. I'm still lost on who exactly was swinging. I think I'm still lost with who is the swingers. But either way, this is the dilemma of being a part of a community. They have expectations about behavior. And I don't think people are owed your pregnancy, your mental health status, the privacy of your stuff. Like, I'm good, girl. I'm going to be on an island with my wife. Leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? Leave me alone. Really want this mom talk group to survive. It's my life right now. Ah, uh, but they want us to survive because it's their life, their community. I get it. I get it. Okay. There was a rumor that Connor was on Tinder. I lied about it because I was embarrassed. I didn't even know it was true until I confronted Connor. I went to him like, like, look at this joke. There was more to that. He had been struggling with a addiction. Religious people really struggle with addictions and secular people who have no purpose in life. If you're drowning in you could go to therapy for it. Okay, addiction is addiction is addiction, but you are doing it because you have no purpose, no direction, no relationship with values. You're having a relationship with impulse control, could be neurodivergency. You gotta talk to a professional because I can't help you, you can't help you, your friends can't help you. You're dealing with a mental health problem. Go to a mental health professional. They will be able to parse it out with you, figure out what's really wrong. Why is it? Why does it exist? If you try to do it on your own, it's gonna be a struggle. If you go to somebody who's religious and just tells you, oh, pray to God, it will be okay, probably not going to help. Go talk to somebody who's a professional in this. Addiction is being, you know, researched. There's people that are interested in figuring it out. You can't just know FAP November and think it's going to save your life. This is real. You're, it's a real struggle. And I think it happens way too often in men who are religious, men who are suppressed, men who are neglected, and uh, men who are shamed for a very normal biological experience. There's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with watching it. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with any of these things. But you also have to have a healthy relationship with it. Because if you don't, then there will be something wrong. And it manifests. I didn't want to say anything. I didn't, I didn't want to come out because I just feel like there's a whole story. You know, there's a reason why people do certain things. And I think he was just confused. I literally said, I was like, this does not happen to me. Like, this isn't something that happens to me. It's just something that we're working through. And I asked, yeah. did it go further than Tinder? No, it, he never met up with anybody. Um, How long had it been going on? Like our whole marriage. <gasps> Oh, whoa. Oh, that's abusive. That For me, it's abuse. Like for, that would be grounds for divorce for sure. Whoa. Yeah, see, I hear that speech from all these men all the time. Certain men, obviously, not the gendered men, like your gender doesn't define you. But men who are raised in particular bubbles, they cheat throughout the whole time of their marriage. They do all these things. Um, yeah, wow. Wow. And is he talking to these girls? Yeah, yeah like full-on conversations with women and mm -hmm. pictures. And This is infidelity. Like, this is cheating. This is full-blown cheating. Like, it doesn't matter if they were never physical. This is cheating. Question is, do you stay in the marriage if you're cheated on? In my marriage, no. We get divorced. Like, cheating is infidelity. Infidelity, financial, romantic, whatever, lying to each other, all grounds for divorce. Does it mean we'll get divorced? But it's grounds for divorce. It means like, okay, now we're having the conversation because like I'm trusting this person 100%. So any form of betrayal like this, I can't sleep next to this person anymore. Like we're too old and too secure in who we are to, to feel like this wouldn't be a huge betrayal. Makes me feel like, like my whole marriage was just like a lie. Wasn't it though? That sucks. I mean, it kind of was. Yeah, I would say it was a lie. That sucks. That must feel so difficult. That's why... This is where I would talk to a professional because even though your girlfriends are a great support system, they just don't understand how to give the right advice compared to professionals who've been studying it, who understand why things happen, who can get you into the right position, a better headspace. Like this is, that would be a huge betrayal. I could see why with it makes a little more sense. Okay, he's confused. 
sexually, but with Tinder. I is, um, are they, are they saying confused sexually with porn? Is that a Mormon thing? What is conf confused sexually in my bubble means you're gay. So, or you're straight or you're talking about your orientation, but they're saying confused sexually. He's watching porn. So is that, is that a Mormon thing? I guess I just hope that, yeah, like you don't look at Connor differently. You guys can look past my stuff. Connor's okay. Yeah. This is where I can't as a friend. I can't. I'm going, Connor is different now because he treated you badly. He abused you for all those years. And then you want me not to treat him differently. I won't treat him without dignity. I treat everybody with dignity, including abusers, because that's my value system. But I'm not going to act like everything is okay. Like I'm not going to act normal like that's the problem i have had with friends where they're like can you be around my abusive partner and be nice to them yes but i'm not going to be like excited to hang out with them i know you're working on it and i trust you to work on your relationship but you're being abused so it's kind of a little frustrating i think when people are like hey can you be like kind to my abusive partner yes uh but asking me to hang out with them like everything is normal is just like, I think so unfair, right? Like, I just feel like, how are we gonna break these generational curses? How are we gonna like help people if we like enable abusers? And if abusers aren't even allowed to like, maybe own up to what they're doing and say like, yeah, like I did this. Like, if you wanna treat me differently, I get it. Um, people should be treated with dignity, but I don't know why Connor would wanna be held accountable in some way. I did this, you know, I did this. I'm working on it. I get why you're mad at me. I feel you. We're working on it in our marriage. Like you don't have to go yell at him. You don't have to belittle him. You don't have to talk badly to him. But also acting like it never happened is like a little silly, I think. I would say I am like the scapegoat for why Whitney moved to Hawaii. I've just been lied to all summer. <laughs> like what the hell? I'd rather have a mean as a friend than a freaking fake, you know, nice girl. It's like using people. Mm, you know, it's like that that study they've done on people who cuss are trusted more than people who don't. It's like, sometimes it's better to have like a to your face than a nice to your face. You know what I'm saying? So I feel that it's probably better to have neither. So I have news. What's the news? Cause I feel like there's like some tension going on. No, I just, I'm, I'm super overwhelmed with like everything. Um, yeah, I've been pregnant for like, I would say four weeks. Shut How, up. Oh wait, 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 wait. It's not good because like, I'm pretty sure I miscarried. So I'm, I'm going to the hospital every other day because like they have to like draw blood because I either miscarried because I had a ton of blood. I was like freaking out and calling my doctor and they're like, We're Yo, the way she tells stories is like the way a liar talks. I'm not calling her a liar, but she's so disconnected from the words she's saying that it doesn't feel real. Like I have news. <laughs> I like miscarried, I think. I'm like pregnant, but like definitely lots of blood. Like, I'm not sure if I should feel sorry for you or not. I'm not, uh, what's happening? Are we like sad you miscarried? Are we excited you miscarried? I don't know how to read the room. Are we happy you miscarried? I don't know what's happening, which is a thing people have. Some people don't want to have a baby. Some people are devastated they miscarry. Some people are like, hey, that's life. What are you going to do? I can't tell what she's doing right now. I can't read the room here. We're pretty sure you like miscarried then. Or I have an ectopic pregnancy. So basically oh. the baby won't like survive. You know that for sure. An ectopic, yeah, it's no matter what, who has one, like it won't survive. But so, what yeah. does that mean? But as it grows, it'll burst your fallopian it, tubes. Yeah. It's been like depressing. What the actual f Taylor? What the f are you doing? Immediately right after sharing this trauma that's happening to you. I did think that too. I did think like Taylor makes it all about herself. I know nothing about this girl, but she is a bit of a main character syndrome. I wonder if that's from childhood, like being neglected in her childhood. So she always wants to be the center of attention or like feel like people are feel bad. That's why he says she sounds like a liar. Not that she is a liar, but she sounds like the cadence of her voice sounds like she's lying for the attention, but things are happening to her, but I wonder if she makes things happen to her so she can be the center of attention, which would be like childhood trauma. And I'd say go to therapy because then therapy will explain why you have this pattern of behavior and her parents sound like people that would traumatize her. Like no offense, every, every parent will cause trauma because that's life. Life itself is traumatizing. Every time you have a baby, just know that baby will end up on a therapist couch because that's how life goes, girl. Even in the best houses, people, therapy is really a beneficial tool. It's like going to the gym for your brain. Okay, so, hmm, okay. For you immediately talk about something traumatic that's going on in your life. How does Dakota feel about it? He was super sad because he was super excited. We're like, whoa, let's do this. We were like, we accepted it. 
are you like going to be more careful moving forward? I am very like just everywhere. I'm like, how did I get this guy? I would never share you with anybody. You're sharing either. Do you want to be married in the temple? My answer would be, I don't want it. Yeah, I don't follow the rules, and that's a given. Like when I came back to the church, like it's like very like higher power God moments for me that were like saving my life. I can't be with you if you want to like party. Okay, good, good boundaries. Like for me, it's life or death. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've thought about all of it. I'm just gonna be honest. Yeah. It makes me sad to be like, oh, I can never drink again. Like, <laughs> like that sucks for me, you know. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I feel like if you're going to choose drinking over your marriage, you're probably done with your high compatibility partner. Really good. He put down his boundaries. Very, very important. It's just something I enjoy and in moderation, like a drink out with my friends. I love that he's putting down his boundaries. How important is that, though? Mm, where are you coming from with that? Do you imagine telling the love of your life, I choose alcohol over you? It's not the love of your life. This isn't your high compatibility partner. Like, could you just imagine? That's what I'm saying. Don't settle. Marry the love of your life or stay single and live your life. Because if you marry the love of your life, it's the greatest experience you've ever had in terms of cohabitating. If you settle, you're going to have just the ups and downs for the rest of your life for no reason. Like, there's just no reason to do that to yourself unless you feel pressured. Taylor's already divorced. She should know. But he is settling for Taylor. If he wants to marry her, someone who won't give up alcohol for a relationship. I just know what I want in my future and it's not any of that. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I find these men that don't like drinking because like I like drinking. So I feel like. Yo, what is this Jersey Shore? I thought we were over. I haven't guys. How different is this from Love is Blind? Whoa. Love is Blind is so different compared to this. This feels so silly. They're 30. This feels so silly, doesn't it? Like, grow up. Grow up. Go to therapy. Grow up. You can't be drinking into your 30s. Like, what? I mean, you can have alcohol, but you can't be like, oh, I love to party with my friends. Like, this is... I'm shook. I'm literally shook. This bubble is crazy. Let's see if he puts down... it. Let's see if he keeps his boundaries. Because he's the only one who can uphold his boundaries. A boundary is for you. It's not for other people. Right? So he puts down his boundary. He has to uphold the boundary, not Taylor. It's not Taylor's responsibility to keep his boundary in place. It's her responsibility to respect the boundary, which she might not do. So then he has to respect the boundary and break it off. 911, what is the city and address of your emergency? There's like domestic violence. Like somebody okay. is screaming, like, get off me. There is a woman screaming. There's like the garage door keeps opening and shutting. It sounds like she's trying to get out. Okay. I don't know if the kids are there right now because I think she um, she she shares time with her hus ex husband. We'll get somebody out there. Just okay. stay here. Bye bye. Uh oh. Body cam footage. Hey, what's going on? Oh my gosh. Nothing. She's hammered. Ooh. Oh, she said, oh, he said she's hammered. She said, so is he. And he said, I'm sober. She's an alcoholic. That sucks. Addiction's hard, bro. Right? She's an alcoholic. Is that a, what an alcoholic? I feel not that I can know what an alcoholic is, but I feel like that's what that is, right? You need to just calm down. Hey, hey, stop. 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 He is attacking the crap out of you. You threw me in the garage. I just want to be able to talk to you without you two bickering at each other. Okay. You can sit or whichever. Mm. Okay. So what's, what's your name? <sighs> That's hard. The neighbors called in saying they heard a bunch of yelling. I'm sorry. Did she drink while she thought she was pregnant? Is that why she miscarried? Not that I'm accusing her of drinking for her miscarriage. Miscarriage. I'm just wondering if they overlapped. I was actually a little bit scared for my life there. I peed my pants because I was so scared of him. So I reacted. I threw the one thing at him. At this time, you're going to be placed under arrest. Why? For DV, for domestic violence. And you turn around and place your hands behind your back. Interesting that they arrested her. I mean, it may, she is the drunk one, which is interesting because you can either be drunk and the perpetrator of violence or you can be drunk and the victim of violence. And that's an interesting, it's interesting. It, you know, it does sound like she is the perpetrator of domestic violence. Um, I know it can obviously be either way. It's not about the gender. It's just about the circumstance. 
very interesting. Even a part of me, some dark, dark thought in the back of my head is almost wondering if she's doing it for clicks and views because of what she said earlier about like controversy. And then I wonder, is she that like, is she Logan Paul brained or is she mentally health, like struggling and she's genuinely like losing it in front of us? I can't tell. Is she Fousey tube or is she Logan Paul in terms of categorization, not literally one to one, but is she the categorization? Which, which category of person is she? Like, who is she in the story? Okay. Very interesting. I can see why you guys wanted me to watch this. I've taken notes. I am interested to see where the series goes. I do feel like I'm being kind of thrown into a bubble I know nothing about. I'm not going to Google them. I'm just going to let the show play out as is. I don't want like spoilers, but also find it fascinating that it's a content creator, a TikTok group that ended up going to sort of a show, which is interesting. Yeah, I'm definitely curious on who she ends up being in the story. No spoilers, but would love your comments in the chat. What do you think is coming up? What are your thoughts about this episode alone? And I look forward to seeing you next one. All right. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking yeah i'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool dun, 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 dun.